All right. The Las Vegas Weekend Review. The Cup Chase starts this weekend. So how about we just go right into reviewing the weekend. So the truck race was actually pretty good. Quick note, though, before I continue on any further. Um, yeah, in my chase grid predictions for the truck chase, I made a small mistake. Originally, when I said it was the second race, the truck chase was Dover. I made a mistake. It was Las Vegas. Sorry about that, folks. My bad. I make mistakes. We're all human. Everybody makes mistakes. All right, so don't need to call me out on it. I already recognized. I know. Um, next time, next year, I'll make sure to double check the schedule before I do the chase grid prediction video for next year, for 2019. But yeah, anyway, continuing on. Truck race is actually pretty good. Pretty good race. And Grand Enfinger won. Grand Enfinger, for once, didn't shoot himself in the foot. How about that? Grand Enfinger gets his first career win. He finally breaks through. All righty. And for the truck series, the trucks are out, are not going to be back for like another uh, three, four weeks. Because the next truck race is Talladega. Oh boy, shit show central. But yeah, we won't have, to, we won't have, so yeah, trucks won't be back till at least uh, until October. But yeah. Anyway, continuing on, Xfinity race, the last race before the Xfinity chase. So. Ross Chastain got the win in the 42. So Ross Chastain breaks through, gets his first career win. See, this is what happens when we don't have leeches in the series. We can actually live true to the saying, names are made here. And I actually watched Ross Chastain's celebration. That was unique, where he was celebrating and eating watermelons in victory. And I've never seen that before. But man, that's actually pretty good. Pretty creative. And oh, by the way, for my chase grid, the same chase I had going into, um, that chase will not change. The same chase we had going in does not change. It's the same 12 drivers he had going in. Bleh, there we go. But yeah. And then we, well, Formula One, uh, Singapore was boring. Lewis Hamilton wins. Well, we know where this trend's going. Lewis Hamilton's now dominating the season again. It's like last year. We know how this song and dance is going to end. So it's going to be another year of Sebastian Vettel and Ferrari choking away another championship. God damn it. But anyway, continuing on. Now to the cup race. Oh boy. The cup race. My mind is just ready to tear this apart. Just ready to tear this apart. So cup race. It was pretty ugly. It was pretty math mediocre at best. Like a lot of the chasers had problems today. They were all crashing or had a problem with sort of sort. Like Harvick had a, Harvick wrecked, Eric Jones wrecked, Chase Elliott wrecked, Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowman had a tire go down. Clint Boyer went in the wall. I think Larson had a tire rub or something. Had a tire go down. Kyle Busch had a tire go down and a spin. Hamlin destroyed his front end. Kurt Busch had a tire failure, dead a wreck. Like, like what was it? Close to like what nine, ten chasers maybe had problems. Like holy shit, this was a complete clusterfuck. I thought Talladega doesn't come till October. Jesus Christ. But no, 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 it wasn't that. That's the problem with this race. No, it was the thing that's caused two o double o the race to go to double overtime. The one thing I'm about to lose my shit over. A goddamn fucking BS debris caution with six laps to go. Where there was no debris on the track. Like, I watched the footage five times. There was no fucking debris in turn two. Get the fuck out of here with that. NASCAR's fucking yes, man. Ruin another fucking race with this bullshit. And once again, NASCAR. I'm asking this for the one millionth time. Wasn't the whole point of stage racing was to prevent BS debris cautions from happening. Answer me this. Why the fuck are they still happening? Why? 
When you say to prevent them, it means no more, none, nada, zero, not fucking one, zero. Do you not fucking understand that? Yeah, that fucking caution with six to go, that debris caution was fucking necessary. And we were on our way to having a pretty decent finish. And NASCAR had to fucking ruin it. David Hoots and all the yes men, and all Brian Francis yes men. Like, Jesus Christ, this sport has not got better ever since Brian France got arrested. It went the complete opposite. It went further down the drain. And how fitting that NBC's theme song is running down the drain. Because that's what this season has been. This race officially seals that. Anyway, congrats to Brad Keselowski. Like, he, what a fuck, he is on a great tear. Three straight wins, damn. Where was this speed all season? But hey, at least he's getting hot at the right time. Three straight wins, he moves on to round two. Of the chase. And it's Penske's 500th win. Um, that's counting both Cotton Ass Car and Indy Car. But uh, yeah. So overall, this my race rating. That fucking debris caution. Because of that debris caution. This race gets an automatic 0 out of 10. There is no fucking excuse for that. You don't. Throw a caution when there's no safety hazard on the track just to air a fucking Duracell commercial or some stupid shit like that. You only throw a caution when there's a safety hazard on the track or a car spinning or wrecking or a fucking car going slow and they can't get off the track. Or when there's fucking fluid, or a blo or car blows an engine, and there's fluid and oil and stuff all over the track. But you know what? But guess what? When Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowling blew their tires out, and there was fucking shit all over the racetrack, they want to throw a caution for that, but we'll fucking throw it for no reason. Or, the main, or maybe the reason was for an invisible fucking plastic cup. That does zero damage to the car. Like, fuck me, what an embarrassment of a race. First race of the chase, and we get this shit. And we haven't really had to deal with BS debris cautions all year. Until now. God damn it, NASCAR, you've learned fucking nothing. You've learned nothing. Like I said this shit with WWE last week, and now I say it with you. How come is it, NASCAR, that when it comes to Business 101, we the fans have to be your motherfucking babysitters? Like, this is fucking pathetic. Like, it's obvious Brian France isn't just a problem. It's him and his fucking yes-men that are the problem and the reason this sport is run to the ground. Yeah, you wonder why? You wonder why people talk negative about NASCAR these days. You wonder why people complain and bitch about NASCAR these days. It's because you keep pulling bullshit like you did today with that BS debris caution with six to go. At that point, that was when I actually cracked open a beer. Because that's what NASCAR's made me resort to now these years. Today. Was fucking drinking. Fuck sakes. I should have stopped watching after 2016 when Jimmy Johnson won the title. Because I knew after that, that would have been a perfect way to go out. Is have watching Jimmy Johnson win a seventh title. Because I knew at that point, this sport wasn't going to get any better. And little did I know, I would be right. But yeah. I'm done ranting on with this race. Zero out of ten, my final rating. Next week is Richmond. Short track, so actually that race will be good. The bad news is I'm going to miss that race because I'll be working overtimes. Because a-holes at work, because assholes at work, mandated overtime. But hey, you know, gotta make bank, gotta make that cash. But hey, that's all I gotta say. And before I go, one more quick note. Congrats to Scott Dixon and Chip Ganassi on winning the Verizon IndyCar Championship this year. Congrats, Scott Dixon. Well-deserved. You had a great season. 
Well done. And it's his Scott Dixon's fifth Verizon IndyCar Championship. So yeah, Scott Dixon, congrats. And yeah, good job. But yeah, I'm done ran on. That's all I got to say. Hope everyone's a great day and yeah, peace out.